going to be discussing axial load comparison warning. We will know the cause of this warning and as well we will know how to rectify this warning successfully. I want to let you know that this warning would not necessarily interrupt your analysis because this warning comes up after your model is being analyzed in product structure. You see this warning and you shouldn't ignore this in as much as it does not interrupt your analysis. Your analysis will be done successfully and you will see this. But I want to say again, do not ignore this. You have to resolve this, which is what I'm going to show us in this video the cause of this warning and how to get right of this warning and i will proceed to take you to axial load comparison table where i will explain some things to us as we make progress in these presentations so stay tuned don't forget to like don't also forget to subscribe to this channel soft reason and also if you are a beginner in product structure and want to become an advanced user of this program there's a link in the description where you can reach to us for a personal training and we will train you from A to Z of product structure. All the type of foundations. We will explain it step by step successfully. And at the end of the training, you will become an advanced user of this program in both steel and concrete. So let us make progress into the presentations of today axial load comparison warning what is it communicating to you now this warning is telling you that 20.49 percent of the load is missing or is being conserved meaning it's not decomposed to the beam all right and so if you proceed you ignore this error and you proceed to carry out the design of this structure you will notice that the structural members will be under design and you should know the result of under designing structural member it can lead to collapse because some load is being conserved or mixing this is more reason why this warning have to be resolved before you proceed into designing the entire structure successfully now, there is a tolerance. If you check very well, you will see that we are having a 20%. They said the one in, one in, difference between the composed load and slab load is 20.9%. So, there is a tolerance of 5%, a default tolerance of 5%. So, once that default tolerance of 5% is exceeded, you will have this warning. Like, in this case, we are having 20.49 percent right there so if you read that you can see the one is a heat line approach for being load decompositions may not be adequate for this model point number two different between building analysis results and on the composed slab load equals 21.59 percent it may be advisable to check the building model refer to axial load comparison table for more detailed information which i have told you that we get to the axial load comparison table so i will explain this to us successfully but before we go into the main explanations i want to let you know that you have this warning when you are designing an iris structure or a massive structure of this kind all right so this is when you have a lot of compartment and panels all right that you have your slabs of which you have your heat lines you know being having the life and the dead load okay transmitted through the slab to the beam successfully and if your slab is having an issue instruction issue you will have issue with loading the compositions so once your load is being conserved or some loads are mixing the difference between the decomposed load and the load on the slab once it exceeds five percent you will have this warning and so let us make progress in the modeling of an iris structure you must be very careful so as to avoid this warning if i should navigate to the story three right there 
and then I get to the plan view of the story tree. I want to show us something here in a minute. All right, so you can see these are my panels and the slabs right there. Okay, so we can see the eight lines parted the slab into four provisions. Okay, so as the load goes to the beams, it depends on the parted provision successfully. So if, for instance, I'm having this beam, 3B774 right there, if, for instance, this beam is not there, and you run analysis, you notice that the load that's supposed to be decomposed to the beam from the slab will be conserved. So once that load is conserved, because this beam is not there, it will not break up the differences between the decomposed loads and the load that is on the slab, both life and dead load successfully. So I will explain that. How do you rectify that? You have to rectify that by ensuring that whenever you are modeling an RI structure or a massive structure of this kind, you have to make sure that you take your time to model it properly. Make sure that your slab, slab, reinforcement slab instructions is being done at the grid line intersection successfully because polar structure decomposed load and transmits analysis calculations through the grid line intersections. That is more reason that if you don't have the grid lines on this environment, you cannot do any modeling because the grid lines a program structure to actually transmit analysis calculations successfully and carry out a proper decomposition. So all your instruction points must be at the center of grid line. I believe that is taken successfully. So let's navigate to the trading. I've actually a uh, model load this structure, analyze and design it successfully. So after analysis, I got that error and I have resolved the error successfully, which as I've explained to us. So right now I will be explaining the actual loads comparison table as we will be navigating to the table. So you have a good uh, understanding of that table. So you navigate to the analysis tab. You can see building analysis is being done successfully on this structure. Click on the build analysis options right there. So in the build analysis, dialog you navigate to the analysis right there so you see the Azure load comparison report click right there so when the program is asking you to refer to an Azure load comparison table this is where you have to come mind you if you join our training program we explain this more deeply to your understanding successfully so you should know that over here we have the Azure load comparison report the total load based on slab loads so what you are seeing there are the stories okay so if you come over here, you can see the columns and some, you know, uh, values, some figures right there. So these figures are, you know, the total axial load on the column in that floor successfully. So from one to eight floors, here are the axial loads on each floor. If you check very well, you'll notice that the axial load on the first floor is more, is more higher than the axial load on every other floor right there. The same thing applicable to wall because there's a wall in the structures and as well as beams. Okay, then the slab will have all of this. So here is the total summations of the you know the loads. So you have it to be 14 0498.0 right there. Okay, so the, this is for the dead load. Okay, so here is also for the life loads. So the life load we wouldn't have any life load for columns, we wouldn't have any life load for walls. Over right here, we didn't have any life load for you know beams. Okay, we only have life load for slabs at each of these floors. That is what you see right there. Okay, we also have the summation of that to be 22, 026.5 right there. You can see. All right, so the, these two tables are called table one. So this one now is going to be table two, which is total load decomposed to the beams. Okay, it's going to be to be table two. So you have to compare these two tables. If the total figures we have in here are different, we are having here at the dead for table one. And then at the date for table two, if they are difference and the differences exceed five percent, you have that warning. Okay, but if the difference is between the dead load on table one and the dead load on table two does not exceed five percent, it's within five percent. 
you have you have your analysis will pass that warning. You won't have that uh, axial load comparison warning. You wouldn't have it. The same thing applicable to the life load. So if you check very well, you have that to be 14 and you have to be 13, 9, which is approximately, approximately 14. So which is the, the differences is within the limit of 5%. So after I've made some adjustment on the structure, it's a six floor structure, okay, which I'm going to be designing it with a pile foundation successfully. Okay, so once I made the monetary adjustment, I was able to get this figure and then I reanalyzed the structure because after I must have checked the structure, I have to analyze it again. So after I analyze it again, I conquered that warning successfully. So if you also check also the life load for the under the table decomposed, uh, under the total load decomposed to beam, you notice that you have that to be 22, 026.5, here is 21.8, okay, which is approximately 22 right there, okay, so it's still within 5% right there. The next table is the build analysis columns and what Excel load table, which is this table. Now, this table also have the cumulative, you have the data G, okay, we explain this basically in our training, okay, we have data D, we have the stories, we have the G, okay, so this is the total dead load on each floor, right there. Here is the total life load on each floor, right there, and this load are axial load, okay, these are axial load on each floor, okay. So, we have the data G. This data G simply means a cumulative dead load, and this one is a cumulative life load. So, in these sections of this table, if you are, if, if you join our training program, we we'll actually explain this deeply to us, okay, to understand it. So, this is a cumulative dead load, cumulative life load, okay. So, this is also used to compare this other table to ensure that you are loading the compositions from one floor to another. Even if you are designing a 25 floors, you are designing 26 floors, if you have a good knowledge of this table, you will not have issue in your load decomposition. You should be able to load the loading at each floor, the loading at each floor, and how heavy each floor is. And then the total load goes down to the uh, last floor, okay, which is being trans decomposed to the columns for the foundation design successfully. So, this check has to be done that way, compare the table 1, which is this first table, and table 2. The figures are supposed to be the same, or if there will be differences, it should exceed the tolerance, a default tolerance of 5%. So once you exceed that default tolerance of 5%, you will have the axial load comparison warning, which you need to go and check your structure and do all the necessary amendment to your structure, okay, to avoid that after you reanalyze the structure successfully. So I'll close this right there. Click on the close option right here. So, what is the solution to that? The solution to that is come down and model your structure. If you are modeling a massive structure of this kind or an island structure, make sure you keep everything aside and focus on your modeling. Make sure the green lines you imported from protest structure from other into protest structures are aligned. So, once your green line is misaligned, your slab instructions may not be accurately placed. And when the slab instructions are not placed properly at the grid lines intersections, the load on the slab may be mixing or conserved. And once this is done, you run analysis, you have that warning. So I believe this is fully explained successfully. I want to say that if you have any question, you drop in the comment sections. In the description of this video, there is a link that you can reach up to us to contact us on a personal training which we are going to train you as a beginner to an advanced user of this program with all type of foundations successfully. Once again, thank you for staying through these presentations. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and stay safe. Bye for now.